What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Now, I know it took me a long time to get this review out, but that's because I've spent the better part of seven days playing this game. I really wanted to give it a shot and give it my honest opinion. Now, I know a lot of people have had a lot to say about Anthem, and the majority of people are kind of hating on the game. But I like to give a full review and kind of spend a lot of time with games like this, especially when they're so polarizing, before I actually give my review out. Now, this is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a review slash kind of discussion. Now, I know in the age of the interwebs, it's very easy and pretty much in vogue to trash a game company if they don't live up to our standards. But you also have to remember that Bioware is responsible for some of the most interesting and remarkable games in history. And look, I'm just going to keep it real. They really made a name for themselves as an industry standard with games like Dragon Age, the Mass Effect series, and Knights of the Old Republic, just to name a few, and those are some of my favorites. Now granted, I'm not completely oblivious to the fact that they have made a few missteps. Mass Effect Andromeda I personally enjoyed, although the game was very flawed and maybe not what fans were expecting. Nevertheless, it was a functional game, but somewhat disappointing. And of course, that begs the question and raises a greater discussion about our expectations about games and the industry in general. Are we simply hyping games up too much based on name brand alone, ultimately failing to meet our expectations? Well, that's just one of the things that we're going to cover today. This is my official review of BioWare's latest anthem. Let's take a closer look. You see, the thing about a game like Anthem is that it's inherently at a disadvantage for several reasons. First of all, early footage of the game was very exciting and we've been seeing this demonstrated at a lot of the E3 events. Also, because of the name recognition, it also puts it at a disadvantage because it's a Bioware title. There is a stupid amount of expectation and mostly unrealistic. But whether or not a game is good or bad is not solely dependent on all the hype or lack thereof sometimes. It has to have a solid story, good gameplay, and an overall fun factor. Now, I will be the first to say that immediately when I started playing this game, I was pretty blown away by it. It looks so interesting. From the first level, I was pretty much hooked. The world of Anthem is incredibly engrossing, and in terms of the overall graphics, I mean, the game is pretty beautiful to look at. I also love the fact that, for the most part, everything runs pretty smoothly. I think one of the things that really hooked me immediately was the combat. The combat here is so satisfying. Not only is the sound design really cool, but you also have a lot of abilities and a lot of ways to take down enemies. I love the fact that they incorporate your melee attacks with your special weapons, and it's just freaking satisfying as hell. The shooting mechanics are really tight, and combat just makes sense. Things and systems that you use are just very intuitive, and you know, you don't have to think about it so much, which is a really good thing. So one of the obvious game mechanics here is that you can fly in this game, which is awesome, guys. And in terms of doing flight, this is how you do it. It is really intuitive, it gives you a sense of freedom, and it really gives this game this wonderful sense of verticality. The other wonderful thing is that because the controls are so tight, and it doesn't matter how fast you're going, even when you're cracking your engines, it gives a whole other dimension to combat, which is awesome. Now, very similar to other games, you do have certain classes in terms of armor sets that you can use. They're known as javelins here. Now, they're not automatically available to you. You do have to unlock them as you gain experience and certain perks throughout the game. Now, they're pretty cool. You have the option between Storm, Ranger, Colossus, and Interceptor. Interceptor being my personal favorite as it's the most nimble. And I think in terms of the combat, it's the one that has the most versatility. The Colossus is really a tank. Ranger is kind of a mid-range javelin, and the Storm is really the one with the specializations, or the ones that have the like lightning and more elemental attacks, which is really cool. Now you also have the option of choosing your gender in this game, which I feel is kind of like a wasted opportunity because you never get to see your avatar. Now it's really weird because there's so much in terms of options of how you want to make your character look, but it doesn't matter because you never actually see him. In the I don't know how many hours of gameplay in the seven days that I was playing this game, there was never an occasion or a perspective where I saw my character in third person without wearing the javelin. So it really is a moot point. It's a lot of customization, even though it's not so intricate. You can't change certain details like hairstyle, eyes, stuff like that. But it, again, it goes back to the same point. It's pointless because you never see this character. 
Now, very similar to other games in its class, something like Destiny, this game lives and dies by the loot that you collect, and all of the specializations, the customizations of weapons, and there's certainly a cacophony of weapons here, although I have to admit, they all feel like the same weapon over and over again. So, after a while, you don't really get as excited for the loot that you collect. Now it's here, you can do upgrades, you can dismantle weapons just like other games and add them to other parts and mix match whatever it is that you want to do. The problem is I felt like I've done this before on other games and some games that have done it better and it all ends up feeling all too familiar and I keep getting a sense of deja vu. Now to its credit, just like the weapons in this game, you can upgrade your javelin to have certain abilities and it's highly customizable. I also like the fact that you can mix and match certain components. Now, the only problem is, is that some things are hidden behind a paywall. Like if you want to change the helmet style, of course you have to buy it. So these microtransactions, unless you want to grind until you die, are evident here and it's a pain in the ass. Another thing I found strangely problematic was in the paint schemes. Now some of the items that you use in order for you to change the color of your javelin don't really mix and match up to the actual paint scheme and it was frustrating because you never got the right color that you thought it was going to be. Small detail but still a pain in the ass. Now I know I keep making comparisons to something like Destiny or Destiny 2. Just like in those games, you do have a central hub, a central nervous center where you can go and collect armor sets, buy things, etc. There's a lot of vendors here, but for some reason this world feels very lifeless, I don't know. I know that there's avatars there and you can interact with them, but I mean it just feels so dead and kind of an afterthought. I mean it's just really lazily done. I think what even compounded the problem more was the fact that you're interacting in this world, this central hub, in first person, and you're moving at a freaking snail's pace, which is even more frustrating. I also have to admit that you have to go through this damn central hub every time you go out into a new mission. You just don't start off into the world, you've got to exit through this damn thing. I don't know how many times I saw this cutscene over and over again, it drove me freaking nuts. Now, to this game's credit, the voice acting and facial animations are superb in this game. Some of the best I've seen, which is really why it baffles me that they put so much detail into these cutscenes and interacting with characters, and the rest of the world is so freaking lifeless. Do you ever regret missing out on the glory days? Back when freelancers were treated like heroes. Contracts would just fall into their laps. Everywhere they went, they were given respect. And free sandwiches. Free sandwiches? Yeah, I haven't had my lunch yet, I'm starving. We're on a tight budget here. Budget has room for sandwiches. You're probably right. You know what? Why don't you uh, head over to the forge, get your javelin tuned up so we're ready to roll if a contract does fall into our laps. And speaking of contracts, this game does a good job of giving you the illusion that there's a variety of missions and things to do. And you have daily, weekly, and monthly events that you can partake in. Unfortunately, this is where this game runs into a serious problem, and you basically hit the grind wall. And again, one of the biggest problems of this interface is that it gives you the illusion that you have a lot of variety in terms of the missions that you want to partake in. Things like track missions, you can change your missions, you can go into free play, and you can take on some of the strongholds, but... I have to tell you, this is where shit gets so goddamn repetitive that the entire game after this is designed for you to just get frustrated and not want to play this game anymore. I'll tell you one of the main problems in this game, and it's a pretty big one. I can't believe that they overlooked this. From the minute that you're launched into this world, all of a sudden, each mission or whatever it is that you're tasked with becomes a rush, a race for you to be the first one to activate something, to locate something. I mean, it just becomes a free-for-all with everybody running to every objective like crazy and everything is already taken care of by the time you get there. Sometimes you can't get there fast enough because your jetpack overheats and you have to slow down or just drop out of orbit and start running to the next objective. But by the time you get there, it's already done. And I just feel like I'm playing catch up the whole time with these missions. And it's so goddamn frustrating. The other major problem with the exception of free play, and this happens sometimes, is how you're actually matched in your squads when you're sent out into this world. Some players are so freaking overpowered that they're basically godlike beings on the battlefield and they take out everybody before you even have a chance to fire a shot. So again, you're just playing mop-up. You're essentially a janitor and you're not really doing anything. By the time you get there, everything has been fucking eviscerated 
and it's just like carpet bombing all the time and you really don't have fun when you're around other people that are so overpowered. Now I know that there is a way for you to set the leveling system in order for you to be matched appropriately, but here's another freaking problem. The player base just isn't there in the time that I experience this game that it takes forever to get into a freaking match. And while we're on the subject, loading screens, holy shit. These are some of the longest loading screens I've ever experienced in a game. Now, I don't know what it's attributed to, but you guys who have been playing this game all have experienced this problem, and it's 2019, guys. I mean, there's no excuse for how long these loading screens are. I know that I'm being nitpicky, and that's a first world problem, but still. I mean, come on, man. And finally, and not to put too fine a point on this, the grinding and the repetitiveness of the events that you have to partake in. Some of them are literally copied and pasted bug hunts over and over again, and there's no freaking excuse for that. Now look, I know it seems like I'm shitting on Anthem, but I'm not part of that bandwagon. I'm just pointing out things that definitely need to get improved and could possibly get improved with patches or updates later on. There's a solid foundation here for Anthem. The gunplay and the gameplay overall is actually pretty good and solid. The visuals are fantastic and the world is very interesting if albeit somewhat dead so to speak but I have to admit there are things that really need to be improved here and it could be a much better game unfortunately right now it's kind of a disappointment and in all honesty after these seven days I don't really want to play it anymore and that's a huge problem for your fan base I mean seriously I'm not even enticed by the loot anymore and that's a core mechanic gameplay that brings people back but again, to be fair to this game, I want to bring it all back and put things into perspective. Did Anthem have unrealistic expectations, especially for a Bioware game? Absolutely. Did people prejudge the game based on all the hype? Of course they did. But that doesn't excuse certain things that they got wrong. Namely, the massive amount of grinding in this game, the anemic world, so to speak, and most importantly, the incredibly repetitive gameplay. But I'm not overreacting like other people are and saying that this game is a total disaster because that's not fair to the game. Does it have a lot of problems? <laughs> yeah, it has several, but it can be improved upon and I hope that they do so because at the beginning or the outset of this game, it was pretty fun. Now before I go, I just want to thank the folks over at FNB Collectibles Incorporated for sponsoring today's episode. Alright everybody, so that's my official review of Bioware's latest title, Anthem. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Safe. Hey, Scars. I don't know what to think. Arcanist and Scars often clash over shaper sites.